Hello and welcome to my 19th tutorial. In this tutorial we are going to cover one of the most important concepts in C++ and that's dynamic memory. So, do you remember pointers? I guess you do. Now we are going to use them today to learn how to allocate memory on the go. Dynamic memory allocation, for example, allows us to create an array of user specified size rather than creating an array for example of 100 objects and using only 10. This way we save the memory of the and make our program more dynamic. All variables occupy some space in the memory. For example, char uses 1 byte, integer uses 4, double 8. But maybe you don't know that, so if you want to check that you can use the keyword size of. So you can say size of int and it will output the size in bytes. So if we run our program, we're going to get four as an output. Yeah. You can change that to int. You can also check a variable, for example, size of a, and it will say four again. So that's one important function that you may use in the future. So remember that. Now let's get to the point. You should know that the memory you reserve dynamically is stored on the so-called heap. It's a place of memory that you manage, and only you. The compiler does not delete anything there by itself. For example, if you exit a function, or the object of your class is destroyed, the constructor is called, if you don't delete the memory manually, it will remain on the heap. So, let's create a pointer. We're going to call it P, and normally you would use it like this. You have an integer A that, for example, is equal 10, and you would say P is, is going to get the address of A, and you can use the P for displaying. Sorry, use the asterisk, display. And if we run our program, let's put a breakpoint here so the execution stops. If we run our program, we are going to see 10, as, as we expected. But the new keyword, it's called actually new, you can do this. You don't need another variable. You can say new int. And this will reserve 4 bytes in memory. And the address will be stored in the pointer. So now, if we say the value of p is going to be equal to 100, and we run this program, it shows 100 also. So we actually created a variable that stores the... It's actually similar to the simple int a, but it's not the same because this is reserved when the program is compiled. And this memory is reserved when program is started. So this enables us to do a lot of other things. The only thing you should um, remember is that you should not forget to delete the pointer after you use. So if you don't need this pointer anymore, you don't need this memory location. If you switch the pointer, for example, let's say the A is again going to be equal 10. If you say the pointer is going to equal to address of A and you print the pointer we lost our number 100 it's somewhere in the heap but we lost it we only see the 10 and we cannot switch back now from now on we lost that address and that's a problem you created a memory leak memory leaks are not good stuff they are bad news uh, most of the time they happen when uh, you create an array of integers we're going to see that in a moment on a sample program and you don't delete the array and you reserve 400 bytes for example or 4000 bytes or 400,000 bytes and that gets that number can get a lot larger if you use some if you code some bigger projects so you should be cautious and you should free any locations before doing anything. So like here, we should say delete P and this will free the allocated memory 
by using the new keyword. So if you do this, we have properly released the allocated um, the allocated um, space for integer, and we switched our pointer to another address, and that's proper. If you don't do that, you create a memory leak. This is a small program, so this you won't see any difference. It will be okay. I create a memory leak, so what? Nothing happened. Everything works fine. But in a complicated project, you can run out of memory, or you can experience some problems of other nature. So, be sure to delete the allocated uh, memory that you reserved if you plan to switch the pointer to somewhere else or uh, on the end of the program or the function if you don't need actually that memory or if you don't have another pointer that's pointing to that memory location. Okay, that's about it. But now we're going to do a simple project, uh, project, sorry, a simple program that will demonstrate what actually and why do we actually use the dynamic memory, the most common, common example. So if you have, for example, an array that's called A and we set it to 100 objects, the user may use, for example, 10 objects of the array. So if we have a program that inputs n numbers, it has the user um, enter number of elements. And now we are going to create another variable up here, going to call n, and it will be a number of elements. And now we are going to insert n, n elements that user wants. For example, let's say equal to n. This is a simple for loop for reading the values, and we're going to say a i. So this will loop through every array till n, array element till n, and insert it. And we're going to copy this so we can print it. So you see the data is inserted. This is a classic way of loading an array and displaying it. And we're going to add a new line over here. And one separator here so you will see the code better. Let's run it now. So enter the number of elements, I'm going to enter three elements, one, two, three. It shows one, two, three. Everything seems to work. But now actually we have reserved 100 memory locations. So 100 locations times four, four bytes, 400 bytes. But we could, we could do that by only, for example, if we input four elements, we can only reserve 16 bytes. We don't need to reserve 400 bytes. So to do that, we use the dynamic memory. In this current situation, it isn't important because it's it's relatively small. 400 bytes. You're gonna you, you your computer will not notice that probably. Okay, but in this example, we're going to do it with dynamic memory. So you're going to change this. You're going to say pointer to A is equal new integer of N. And we should move this a little bit down after the user input of number of elements. So the program will automatically on the runtime when it's run will know how many memory locations should it reserve. So this way we save memory and our program is more proficient. So five elements, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Everything works the same way, just you didn't reserve 100 elements, you reserved only the needed number of elements. That way you save memory, for example. So that's about it. In simple way, you learn how to use dynamic memory. You can change the int to double or char or anything else. You can use that for your objects. You have a class, for example, something, and you use it. 
uh, you can create um, the specified dynamic number of objects you don't need to statically create for example 100 objects and use only the portion of that that's the main cause why we use this because if we have a complex class that has a lots of data and for example one object only is one megabyte and you have 4000 objects it's 4000 megabytes and that's a lot and some computers don't have that much and you only need 100 megabytes you should use dynamic memory of course at the end of the program you should free the allocated memory or the end of the function or the structure of your class you should free the allocated memory in our case uh, we allocated an array of integers so it will be a little bit different than the delete we used before so we type the delete and then add the brackets and type the name of the pointer so this way all elements will be properly deleted and memory would be freed so if we create an array of five elements as you can see everything went well displayed delete went the program ended without an error so everything was successful uh, you should note that if you have brackets up when you create an array you should delete also with brackets if you don't have the brackets if you only create one integer location you should use delete without the brackets here thanks for watching this video if you have any questions please post them in the comments i will try to help thanks again for watching and please subscribe